Hey folks, it's Steve at M4 again. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different. It has nothing to do with LEDs. It's just a project review of something I made for a swivel seat application for a Freightliner M2106 where they're using the later ISRI seats that do not have a swivel available for the top of the seat the way it works. Instead, I did a project where I made a swivel adapter for the base of the seat, and this is just to demonstrate it if you want to make something similar. Apologize in advance, the uh, video quality of the review and the installation is a little rough. It was getting a little dark, but I uh, threw it together, and hopefully this helps somebody else out. This is uh, related to a Freightliner M2106 uh, truck chassis on a on an RV and trying to get a swivel seat out of a, the latest seats that they're using, which is a ISRI uh, manufactured seat. With going to that seat, they lost the ability to swivel. And uh, a bunch of people are trying to figure out a way to make at least uh, one of the seats swivel so that when you have a uh, Super C motorhome, you can swivel the seat around and have additional seating. I've come up with a little uh, design exercise concept. It's not like a product for sale or anything like that. It's just basically an idea that I'm gonna put into our uh, RV and see how it works and if it's functional. Normally on a swivel seat, the swivel is gonna be up between the seat and the, uh, the frame or the riser, the suspension seat. And uh, due to the things that are going inside this new seat with the pneumatics, uh, they're unable to do it apparently at this point. So what I've come up with instead is a swivel that goes down at, underneath the base of the seat all the way at the floor level. And so the entire pedestal also spins with it. Uh, I probably overbuilt this thing. It's all half inch uh, steel on two plates with a nylon spacer in between. I'll give you a look at it and uh, do kind of a review of how it installs. So here's the general idea. The chair is gonna sit uh, on top of this. The back is on this side uh, with the existing pedestal that's gonna be sitting right on top here. It is gonna increase the height about two and a half inches. Uh, the top ones also do the same thing. I've already had this in the RV. I just made some adjustments. And uh, the seating position is fine. You just run the seat a little bit lower. I like sit sitting at a mid-level anyway. I'm about six foot, so it's comfortable that way. Uh, there are two threaded holes on the front that you need to access from the bottom in order to screw into the stock pedestal because those have nuts inside them that are threaded with metric nuts. These are all uh, uh, M M8, I believe, uh, nuts on there. Uh, some of the hardware that I used is uh, standard on this just because I used what I had here on this demo or project that I'm working on. The concept is that it's the entire thing is swiveling around this large bolt that goes straight through. You don't need a hole like a typical swivel with the the tubes and things going through it because the whole chair is fed by one pneumatic tube in our RVs. Uh, on this top plate you'll notice I do have a second hole here that was uh, the first one that I tried and it was a little too far forward so I have a new hole that's back about an inch and when swiveled it's going to be back about two inches. So in order to swivel this M12 Uh, handled bolt goes all the way through both. It's threaded all the way through so that actually becomes structural too on top of the three-quarter inch which is going to be stronger than the original four uh, that came from the factory anyway. But between those two that's what's going to be holding uh, everything together. This only needs to be backed off to where you can swivel. And you go a little bit more and basically it's going to swivel around to where you need to be. 
and then you will it could be locked down if we added some extra threads in there play around with that and to bring it back it's going to swivel this way and to lock it down before you drive run that all the way in This uh, main bolt is going to have a washer at the bottom and also a sliding plate uh, because the top of this is not going to spin because it's going to be right up against the seat base. The bottom needs to spin then, so it's going to have a nylock on there, which will be tight, but not tight enough not to uh, spin. It's just going to be uh, tension on it so that it's tight and doesn't rattle or anything else. So going through the top plate itself, uh, there, of course, is a lock handle that I mentioned before. I'm going to back that off again. Uh, the threaded hole up here is no longer necessary. That was when I was trying to put this handle in the front, but then realized that the mechanism going up and down was in the way if I put the handle in the front so the handle needs to go into the back. You're also going to notice there's a window here. That window is so that when the suspension seat is working the shock dips down in there and then when it's swiveled around it's on the outside here so it's going to uh, dip down off to the outside of the plate. So the second layer and the top layer are cut with a window so that it can still articulate the way it's designed to go. So again, half inch steel plate, the thing's not going anywhere. Unfortunately, it's a little heavy, but it doesn't matter where it's gonna be if it's heavy. On the next layer. I am running this little extra plate. What is it? It's an old Frisbee, just something I had in the garage, but it's slippery. It's uh, probably polyethylene and uh, allows it just a little bit more slide. When I put this into the RV, I'm gonna put a little grease on this too, so it'll slide just a little bit more. Uh, nylon plate. So this gives it the space and the height for the window again. This is all hand cut out, so it's a little bit rough, but it works. Uh, these four screws hold down the nylon to the bottom plate and they need to come off in order to put the bottom plate onto the RV uh, first where the standard riser is coming up from the floor in the back and then and I'll try to record that too as it's going in. So everything should be good now. Uh, I will set the camera up and try to do it step by step as I'm putting it in just to get an idea and we're going to see where we at with, with the spin and everything else with room. It's still tight up in that cab, uh, but I think we're going to be alright. And then the final thing is going to be talking about seat belts because the seat belts have to be dealt with a little bit differently because they do tie into the seat. And uh, I have some ideas on that. Okay, here we go. Here's the uh, standard pedestal and, and where it sits. Uh, these are metric screws. I did countersink them into the plates so that they sit flush or below the surface. Uh, some small spacers to raise this up a little bit. Just like the original steel plate has some spacers that are welded on there. Uh, bottom plate. So the bottom plate's basically sitting right there. Get these things started. I'm not going to tighten those completely until I get the fronts in position. Same thing, those are countersunk so that the top plate will slide over them. That's not the right, it's just tight. That one's tight, washer, nylock so it doesn't back off. That 
when it started by hand. Now I could have made the window all the way through, but half inch steel is kind of hard to cut. So with what I had going on, it didn't really need it. So I left the bottom one not all the way through. I did draw the uh, drill the pilot holes for the corners. So if anything gets trapped in there, it can come out or it can be vacuumed out or whatever. But there should be uh, too much down there. Maybe some dog hair or something. So I'm going to tighten those up nice and tight. Try to get this done as quick as we can this way. So you got a better view of it. This is the original hole that we're not using. This is the hole that we're using. So it really only needs a one. And hopefully that puts it far enough away from the steering wheel. Basically when I tested it the other way, this way it was real hard to turn around the steering wheel whether it was up or down. So just by going back an inch, basically once it swivels gives you two inches. nice and tight so they sit below the surface. Same way. So those are flush, that's flush, that's flush, that's flush. Nylon plates going huh? in. Originally it was thought the nylon itself was going to be slippery enough and it probably is, but I'm still going to add my little special spacer anyway. And these are a standard as well. And these are just keeping this plate from rotating. So looking at it again, this is where the T-handle is going to go. This is the one that's no longer being used. Uh, I could have used this one still and put the T-handle up from the bottom. Or if I wanted to add a second one, I could do that. It just wasn't... Uh, is easy to get to is going to the back. Okay. Right, next we're going to get that special spacer plate. Real thin. It's just giving it a little something to slide on and I got a little grease on there as it pushes around a couple times it's going to spread the grease. And the top plate. So to keep this all in position, I'm going to go ahead and drop a bolt, I'm not using a washer on the top because the seat sits right here and it's going to be sitting up right against that. And it's half inch plate, so the washer is really not going to do much for you anyway. I'm going to go ahead and Drop that down part way just so it's not spinning on me real easy. Now you do need to still run a spacer on these because the, uh, the metal cross bracket is about a half inch up. So I'm running spacers in those corners. I'm not going not gonna to put the front ones in until I uh, go to put the bolts in. Obviously I can't put the bolts in from the bottom. And we'll rotate this to uh, to be able to access those. On the bottom on this bolt, I'm going to run this again, a uh, slip plate and a washer. And I actually want this to not move so much, but the washer is going to move on the uh, smooth side of this plate. And then the nut's going to be on the very bottom. Obviously, you can't see what I'm doing here. And I can feel underneath right now there is enough room that the bolt's not going to cause a problem with the floor. And I'm not going to tighten this yet. I'm just going to get it close to where I need to be because I want this to rotate as I'm setting the chair onto it. Okay, so actually I do have to take this out because it's going through the back of the seat once it's in position. So that would be in the way. Set that aside. 
You notice that everything on this on this chair is only coming through this one tube so as long as we swivel and don't pinch or pull on the tube we're going to be okay these two studs being up actually helps set it in position easier i figured that out while we uh, put the front ones on after that these chairs are heavy so let me get this thing back over there and that is there and that's in position I know you can't see a whole lot about what's going on at this point but I'm gonna have washers and nylocks on the back again here washer and a nylock on this side If we're lucky, and you can see, I'm not sure that you can. This is where the spacer needs to go in on the front, and it has to be swiveled in order to get to these bolts. And again, the uh, holes on these have countersinks on them so that the All right, let's try to get a better look at what I was doing. Uh, I've already put in the front screw over here. On this side, there's the, there's a threaded insert in this base. And then I put in the spacer, and then I need to put the screw in on that side too. Uh, I'm going to replace these with a little bit longer one later. They are getting eh, probably enough threads once it's countersunk all the way in there. But... Uh, A little bit longer wouldn't hurt. So now the seat is tightened down on the front two there and then the back I still need to tighten down but basically the same thing the spacers washers nuts and I'll tighten those down now and then I'm going to do the main uh, bolt in the center. I'm not sure if you can see this probably not with the light. The light's not that good. But uh, I'll get that main center one tied together and then we'll see where we're at. All right, so it's still a little bit hard to see. I should have done this in better light, but uh, there we are swiveled around towards the back. Now it is still really tight towards the steering wheel at the right angle. We got to work on the best uh, dance of moving the chair forward and back and reclining it forward and back in order to get it past the steering wheel and which way to spin it. It can spin really either way. But uh, there's the, what's now the front of the RV, the rear nuts and how they're in there. And the front is in there. And I wish I could spin this around to uh, show the motion, but it's kind of hard to do with two hands. I might need some help with that. So since it's in this position too, obviously the seat belts are going to spin with the uh, chair the way that I have it. Now there's this bar right here. Uh, normally the limiter straps are tied right to the same bolt as the upright. What I'm going to do is I have belts coming tomorrow with a release seat belt basically with steel ties that'll go to the normal limiter strap on the floor on both sides so that those will be tied to the floor but you can quick release them to uh, take them on and off. And then the belt on this side uh, the receiving side is uh, permanently bolted to the chair. On the other side you can't do that because uh, that's the shoulder belt. So that one's just going to go straight to the floor too. And that'll be there with the limiting strap and then back to the chair. I drove with it all the way down at this position before. It's really no issue. Uh, as long as the chair is not going up and down too much it's going to hold you in the same place and in my opinion be just as safe so that's all in everything's tight i don't have the seat belts done yet i have those coming as i mentioned tomorrow here's kind of the dance to get this thing to swivel uh number one 
you got to back off the the uh, easier to move it forward. Back off the lock screw, which keeps it from rotating and also gives it extra support. And this has to go through the bottom plate and then also the center plate until it's free of the nylon. It can come all the way out, but leaving it there is fine too. Seat has to be all the way forward as far as it'll go. The handle down and rotate it around. Now it seems easier to get the chair around this way. It does contact the steering wheel a little bit in this location, but pulls around no problem. And from there you can leave it in the forward position if you want to be able to recline more. And we'll get the recline. And you're good to go. I don't have a lock position in this position, but it's solid. Obviously the air is down right now easy enough and then doing the seat belt uh, tethers will just be snap snap too so again putting this back into normal position and it's solid with that plate and everything in there go forward again rotate it around slide it past the steering wheel watching the hose of course as it comes around and then it can start coming back. Actually, I'll bring it forward just to make it easier to put the set pin back in. And want to run that all the way down until it's tight. Seat belt clip clip here here. Seat back into driving position. Good to go.